Hi guys and welcome to a deck tech video for Armix Filgree Trasher and Chrome's Ludwig's Opius. With me today I have a person who's been building and practicing this deck, Eagle. Welcome! Thank you. Um, I'm Eagle, sometimes known as Eagle Eagle. I brew a lot and I play a bunch of CDH. If you're on the r slash CDH server, you might know me because I am quite active there. So why play Armix, Filgree Treasure? This is a mono black, free mana cost free too. Whenever this Armix Filgree Treasure attacks, you may discard a card. When you do, target creature defending player controls get minus X minus X until a turn where X is the amount of artifacts you control plus the number of artifacts cards in your graveyard. And this is an artifact itself. So why this? Is because we have so many various of Grixis yeah. commanders. Yeah, there are so many Grixis commanders. You've got Rog Silas being very fast, and then also being very fast, you've got like Anala, Malcolm Vile, Jaleva, and then on the other side, you've got still very fast, but more better at grinding, like Krom, Tavish, and Cass. I think Armic and Krom is somewhere in between those, in between Rog, the really fast Turbonos and the fast, but still good at grinding Turbonos that doesn't give up grind power for speed, like Rog Silas. Armix Krom is very fast, and the reason why it's faster than, for example, Tevish Krom, which might not be obvious at first look, is because of the Citadel lines. Instead of having just Ad Nauseam and Pierre, you also have Bolas' Citadel, which you can get very fast thanks to three cards in your deck. Goblin Welder, which trash for treasure, which some of you might not know. It's two and a red for a sorcery. It says as an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice an artifact, return target artifact from your graveyard to the battlefield, which might seem bad, but it isn't very hard to get Bolas' Citadel into your graveyard. You have Faithless Looting in Tomb, and you have it in your command zone with Armix. And two and a red might sound like a lot, but it's two and a red for basically winning the game. Once you get Bolas' Citadel, you probably win, especially if you still have a land drop left. And the third card is Transmute Artifact. Armix is an artifact, and Transmute Artifact has been used with Bolas' Citadel in the past, I think with Silas, but Armix does more things than Silas and is cheaper than Golos. You can get this out turn one, turn two, if you have a transmute artifact, very easy. You just need a mana crypt, jeweled lotus, soul ring, mana vault, and he provides you value. That's the main reason to play Armix. He's very good against stacks because he's not, his ability is not hurt by any stacks. It's not hurt by rule of law. It's not hurt by null rod or the creatures that Collector Oof, Archon, and he can remove those creatures. Usually when you're playing this deck, you get Armix out turn one, turn two, and you have two artifacts. So if you play another artifact, you can remove almost any creature in the format. You can remove Archons, you, already you can probably remove Oofs. You can also remove Timnas, Thrasioses. I've even removed, while playing this deck, I've gotten as many artifacts to remove a 6-6. Six, six. Here's the thing I really, really like about this setup here, that usually when you look at commanders that have interaction, they don't really have a card draw, like Maraf can sit there and remove creatures with Naya colored entities. You have Breya, they can sit there and remove creatures. You can sit here and remove creatures, which is going to open up your deck. You don't need to have that many interaction pieces as we talked about, but you still have card draw. Like you haven't sacrificed yeah. card draw from your command zone here. Armix having partner is amazing because, well, first of all, partner is just a busted mechanic. Yes. But this card says you need to discard cards. It's not going to give you card advantage. It basically one for one's opponents, which in multiplayer is actually card disadvantage. But then you can partner with something that's going to draw you cards. Krom is not very hard to get out of either. You just need like a Mana Vault, Mana Crypt, yeah. Soul Ring, Jeweled Lotus, and you can usually get them out turn two, maybe turn three, if you're trying to go for that. And that is already like helping you because that Lion's Eye Diamond that can get your Krom into play faster will stay in your grave to make your Armix kill creatures. And then you can go for the typical Breach combo, which I'm guessing you're going for. Like an, it's an automatic yes. out-include here, right? Yes, and Breach is very good in this deck. I think we fill up our graveyard the fastest of any Storm Turbo Nas deck. 
because we're discarding cards with RMX, we're also playing cards like Faithful Suiting and Entomb. This is really speed. Like, you can drop your bolas from your hand, then reanimate it instantly with your welder. But, I mean, you have other things. You have Peer into the Abyss that you can reanimate with Mystic's Mastery. Yeah, Mystic's Mastery is a card before this list even existed, really. Kind of at the beginning of Commander Legends, where Grixis Turbo Nose was becoming more popular, I saw a lot of people including Mystic's Mastery. And I wasn't really playing Turbo Nose at the time, but as I brewed this deck, I was like, oh, I should test Mystic's Mastery, not even realizing how it synergizes with the deck. And then uh, I was playing a game where I think I think this was actually a game I was playing with you, but it was, I had an ad nauseum and I drew Faithful Suiting Peer into the Abyss Mystic's Mastery. Oh yeah, or maybe yeah, this, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so I just Faithful Suiting Peer into the Abyss and cast a Mystic's Mastery and I could win. You did this all with Red Mana, because I think you casted a Jessica's Will first to gain yes, yes, Red Mana. Yes, which is also a really good part about Mystic's Mastery. It's not just for Peer into the Abyss. Well, it can also be for ad nauseum, but it can also be very good with Jessica's Will, mm. because you just cast Jessica's Will and then you cast Mystic's Mastery and you get another Jessica's Will, which means you're getting basically six cards and more mana if it's making more than four mana. You play another combo inside this deck that I really like. And I guess the reason why Necropotence is just in here automatically is because of the Bola Citadel. So the thing about Necropotence was, first of all, it's basically just Sensei's Divining Top off Citadel, but it costs you three life. Second of all, it's just a really good card. And I included Necropotence, so I also included Final Fortune, which I think I've seen a lot of people cutting Final Fortune from Turbo Nostalus, and I don't think this is very correct. If you're playing Necropotence and you're not on green where you have Crop Rotation Emergence Zone, Emergent Zone, you probably should be playing Final Fortune because if you just Necropotence for 10 or 20, first of all, if people are playing Chrome decks, they might just be able to kill you. And second of all, people might just people are gonna know that you're gonna win next turn. So they're just going to have other interaction or they're just gonna wheel. And then you will have to interact with that wheel and you might not have enough interaction for your combo to protect it. One thing I really like about Final Fortune is that I actually, don't, I actually think you can play it even without Necro. Because if you, for example, you have your win in your hand and you're sitting there and waiting, but you know that your opponents have counter spells, you can wait for a perfect timing when suddenly a lot of people have tapped out and just cast Final Fortune. And you take your yes. turn and then you just win the traditional way with what you've stacked in your hand. What are you looking for in your opening hands? In an opening hand, you want to have two things. You want to have mana and you want to have a payoff. That can either be a tutor, a wheel, or Nas, Pier, or Citadel. And it gets more complicated because it can also be like Entomb plus Trash for Treasure, or Entomb plus Goblin Wilder, or Entomb plus Mystic's Mastery, stuff like that. But that's why in this deck it's very important to mulligan aggressively. What do you think is this deck's strength? Like, why would you pick this deck? Why would you bring it to a tournament? What is this deck going for it? Well, this deck is very good at dealing with all three. I like to divide the CDH meta into archetypes. Basically, well, there are some decks that don't fall into these, but right now, I feel like the CDH meta is kind of archetypal. There's Turbo Nas, there's Thrasios Midrange, and there's Rule of Law stacks. Those are kind of the bastions of the meta. And each deck is kind of a rock, paper, scissors. Like you want rule of law stacks to be versus turbo nose. You want turbo nose to be versus mid range and you want mid range versus rule of law. But I will this agree deck, to some extent of this, but I think it's more some complicated. Some extent, it's, yeah. it's, it's much more complicated, but simplifying that, this deck is very good against all three of them. It can outrace Turbo Nos because it's basically as fast as almost every Turbo Nos deck besides ROG decks, which are a little bit faster, but not that much. It can beat stacks by just removing hate bears. And versus mid-range is definitely your hardest matchup, but it's not that hard. You, your Armix is mostly used to remove hate bears, which mid-range decks still play. You can remove Draneths, you can remove Hull Breachers, you can remove Op Agents, you can remove Oofs, but you can also just remove Thrasios' and Timnos. What about this deck's uh, weakness? What should you think about when you're constructing this deck? Well, I think the main weakness of this deck I don't think it has many big weaknesses. I think it has a few small weaknesses. Non-creature stacks can kind of hurt it. 
but you, non-creature stacks are first of all harder to tutor and be, second of all they usually don't get down as fast you might get a rule of law down fast but usually creature stacks are going to get down fast because they want to cast like a timna or something and start attacking and gaining value so mostly people prioritize hate bears and this deck is still guessing you can that still this run. is one of the more annoying stacks pieces you could run into as it is just one man yes. it comes into play kind of fast yes. That is probably the most annoying, and it's also annoying that a lot of decks play it, not just mid-range, but all, not just stacks, but also mid-range. I think another weakness of this deck, if you don't win early and you're kind of getting beaten down a lot, Ar Armix is very good at dealing one hate bear deck or two hate bear decks, but when there are three creature decks, it can be very difficult to remove all the necessary pieces and conserve your life total. So this is like in the between of everything. You have you have a little bit of everything it means that you're good versus a lot of things and you're not really weak against that many things. Well, it's an I think it's overall more... good goodness. Yes, I agree, but I think it's not really the cards we're playing because our list is very similar to just a Rog Silas list. I think it's more just Armix, just provides you a good matchup versus stacks, and Krom can provide you a good matchup versus mid-range, and Armix can provide you an okay matchup versus mid-range. So you can just play this Turbo Nas shell and not really have the problems that really fast Turbo Nas decks like Malcolm Vile and Rog Silas have. Interesting. What do you think about this card, Mnemonic Betrayal? I have been playing that. I, I like this card a lot, but I feel as though it really depends on your meta. If there are if there are zero Turbo Nas decks in your meta, you, this card isn't very good because if you're just if you've wheeled once and you cast a uh, mnemonic betrayal against three dork decks, casting dorks that's not that good because usually when I'm trying to cast a mnemonic betrayal, I'm trying to win the game or at least set up a win next turn. You really need to have at least one Turbo Nas deck in your pod to do that. So in my meta, I'm usually playing against at least one, if not two Turbo Nas decks. So I think it's playable. But if you're playing against more mid-range decks, I wouldn't recommend it. What about this artifact in that case? Nihil Spellbomb. It's an artifact. It has card draw. It has interaction to remove graves, and graves are kind of important right now. One thing I, one reason I really like this for your deck is because Bola Citadel, because you cast it for free and you can sacrifice it to draw a card if you have a land on top of your deck with the Bola Citadel. That is a good point. I do like that. Something small going for it. It has card draw, so you can cycle it. It is an artifact with your commander, and it kind of helps your. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, really I don't know. I think I need to think about that a little more. I'm not sure this deck wants to be in a place where it's casting Nile Spellbomb because that's kind of... Nile Spellbomb's not really the kind of interaction this deck wants, but you're making some good points because the problem with Nile Spellbomb compared to other interaction, why this deck doesn't want is, is it it because it doesn't protect your own win. Yeah, that is true. Like other counter spells. But I think I think I might think about it. I might test it. I don't know. I need to think about it a little more. What about this one? Yagmoth's Will. The smaller, older, weaker version of a red card of Breach. Yes, I... The main problem with Yagmoth's Will is when you're trying to win the game with Yogg's Will, you have to go for Thassa's Oracle Consult. You can't go for the Eater combo with Breach, because Yogg's Will says if a card went into your graveyard, exile it instead. That's my main problem with Yogg's Will, but I could totally see playing it. It's probably like, one, if I had to add like 10 cards to the deck, Yogg's Will would probably be one of them. What about like your commander are currently discarding stuff a little bit here and there. Have you thought about cards with flashback or cards with madness? I've thought about it a little bit. I was um, playing a few cards that interacted more with the graveyard. I was playing a uh, goblin engineer at the beginning, which was an entomb for Bolas Citadel. But it wasn't, I didn't really like it because I couldn't get back Bolas Citadel. That was my main problem with it. I, ha I have thought about some flashback cards, but CDH is basically about playing broken cards. And I don't feel like the flashback cards are broken enough. If I was to play one of them, it would probably be Past in Flames. Now, for those that are interested in the description below of the video, if you want to take a look at exactly how this deck have been put together by Eagle, you can uh, see this result.
that's it for us. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you got inspired on how to build RMX Grixis with Chrome. And thanks for coming here in Eagle and sharing your experience with us. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and you want to support me, feel free to share my videos or even checking out my Patreon page. Also, purchasing cards from the TCG Player's website using the affiliate link in the description below of the video will also help the channel grow. So a big thank you to all of you.